If, in fact, inflation is here to stay, at least as far as we can see, how does that change an investor's decision? For example, with fixed income, what does that make you attracted to? So right now, I'd say what it makes me attracted to is staying short duration, right? You stay short duration, you are extremely careful, as much as Savita said, you look at individual sectors in the corporate debt space, and you are very careful about selecting individual corporates, if that's where you're going, in in the event that we have a period before a distinct slowdown, slowdown in the economy, you can look at things like floating rate. But to me, what I think about as, you know, the, the, the light at the end of the tunnel is actually that if we get through the next year, the next two year, year and a half of rates going up and fixed income looking rather unattractive at the long end, we do come out of the other side where it finally, after maybe close to 14, 15 years, we will have what I would think about as a bog standard recession, i.e. you would have long end rates high enough and short end rates high enough that the Fed could actually stimulate the economy using that old fashioned tool of cutting interest rates. <laughs> and that actually is a positive environment for fixed income. It's just that we've got to get from point A to point B. And during that time, especially right now, we're going to see a lot of volatility. Same question on equities. So on equities, I think it's a similar answer, but um, you know, it's the idea of short duration or medium duration equities. And this would be dividend yield, dividend growth, um, companies that are giving you your cash up front. And one of the things that we've noticed is that dividends lagged earnings growth last year. We saw a lot of earnings growth, 50% earnings growth last year, but dividend growth was you know, just a fraction of that. I think we're gonna see catch up. I also think we're moving into a total return world. And if you think about it, since the beginning of the S&P 500, over a third of your total return has come from income. In the last 10 years, we've had this heyday for, mm -hmm. for stocks and price returns. But I think we're moving back to an environment where total return and dividends are going to be a much bigger part of our, our overall uh, wealth creation. Savita, so at Bloomberg, we tend to talk about uh, sectors a lot when it comes yeah. to equities. I saw that you said not so much <laughs> sectors as it is factors. Well, so it's interesting because, you know, everybody wants to know what consumer stocks are going to do during a, you know, a rising rate environment. And if you think about the consumer sector today versus 20 years ago, two of the biggest stocks in consumer discretionary are Amazon and Tesla. 20 years ago, it was Walmart and GM. These are different types of companies that are going to behave differently in an environment of rising rates. So the way we like to slice and dice the market is by looking at factors. And what I mean are, you know, kind of themes or, or ways to pick stocks uh, like free cash flow yield is one of my favorite screening criteria. Because I think, as, as Sanal mentioned, we're in an environment where the Fed is basically moving cash yields from zero to three or four in a very short period of time. So free cash flow yield at an equity level, I think, is one of the most powerful ways to invest today. So now on fixed income, at what point do we need to be concerned about credit risk? I mean, what about default? Remember the old idea of default? Yeah. We haven't had much of that lately. Yes. <laughs> no, we haven't had much of that lately. And I think that already the, pro the, the issue of choosing with care is becoming increasingly important literally by the week and month. Having said that, a lot of corporates are coming into this period in much better shape than they were previously. And I think, again, uh, you know, it's uh, singing from the prayer book, but you've just got to, you've, you've got to be active, you've got to make sure that you're picking very carefully. I think going back to what Savita said, uh, fixed income at the end of, you know, the silver lining if, uh, that I was talking about is that, in fact, there will be some income coming from fixed income, something which we haven't had now for a good 15 years. So I think that's another thing which is a positive over the medium term. But the Maybe or <laughs> not right now, yeah. but we will, we will get there. The yeah. path to getting to that point, though, could be much yeah. more painful for bonds Very than for painful. stocks. So I think I, the, the I benefit agree. of stocks is that earnings grow with inflation rather than just a fixed coupon. And I think that's where we see the opportunities within the equity market. I would just note, though, that there, there's, there are also questions about starting valuations. I'd be the last person to argue that bonds were particularly undervalued coming into this uh, particular mm -hmm. period. But I think there could be some debate as to where we were starting. But 
definitely, you know, uh, it's not a time to be long duration, which does tend to move you towards equities, particularly since the slowdown, I don't see that happening in the next quarter or two quarters in a meaningful way. So I think it's further out. It's a part of the reason that inflation will stay relatively strong, I believe, uh, as we go forward in the next few quarters. The economy is not going to have slowed down enough, quickly enough. Savita Sanal said a lot of corporates go into this from a credit point of view in a strong position. Yeah. A lot, mm -hmm. not all. Not all. And it makes yeah. me wonder about the so-called zombie corporations. There are more of them out there than we think there are. Absolutely. And this, I think this is when we talk about bathing trunks and the tide going out and things like that. <laughs> right. No, I think that we've been in, in an environment where hurdle rates were effectively zero, capital was free, and it funded yep. almost any company that yes. needed capital. And I, today we're starting to see the real companies, the wheat separated from the chaff. And um, and I think that's a good thing. I mean, we're getting back to a more rational market environment. We've, we've come back to a point where real rates are positive, where they were negative last year. So I think there are a lot of positive trends that we're seeing that will create more of a stock picker's market, more of a, you know, a market where active managers can actually outperform the passive benchmark, which is something we haven't seen in quite a while. Um, you know, we're, I think we're past the point where all you need to do is buy an S&P index fund and you'll be fine. Uh, so, so now I'm curious, besides factors and sectors, you also have geography. Uh, when it comes yeah. to fixed income, are there some opportunities if you go geographic? So I think there probably are, because the reality is, I look at the US and I look at Europe, Europe is facing what I would consider a more traditional supply shock. Right. Uh, the price of gas has gone up three times in, it's three times more in Europe right. than it has in the U.S. because of our different situations. Right. In the U.S. instead, I think, I think you're going to see divergent monetary policies, right. which is something which we haven't really seen yeah. again in a long time. And that always offers up some opportunities in fixed income.